This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Shalom Aleichem everyone When I was a Bachar for the B'Shosh Rosh Shiva Shlita who uh, I see I'm a Kamada cousin with Rosh Shiva so B'Shosh Chosh uh, Rabbeim When I was a Bachar 14, 15, 16 years old there was one Sefer that had a very big hashba on me I had a Rebbe in 10th grade, uh, Rabbi Elio Meza Shlita, and he used to learn with us the Sefer Shari R. Now, Shari R is not a very well learned Sefer. Even in yeshivas that learn Moser, I don't think Shari R is usually learned. And then one summer, he learned with us Koich Ve'ar. And we learned both Svarim cover to cover, Mamish cover to cover. And these two Svarim were the Svarim of Ravitzla Petterberg. Ravitzla wrote Shariar, he wrote Nesivasar, he wrote Koich Ve'ar, and he wrote Ar Yisrael. The Ar Yisrael that we have today was written by Ravitzla Petterberg. From Rav Yisrael we have very little in writing. And the Shariar in particular made a very big Rosh Shamami, and Koich Ve'ar as well. And the Shariar is all about Rav Yisrael Salantar Shita, of the importance of uh, learning Musar. Shariar talks about the idea that everybody knows there's a Rebbein Shalom. Everybody believes in the Rebbein Shalom. Everybody knows there's Chav Einesh. But that Yediya makes Kemat no Roshim on anybody's lave. Because everybody does Chatoim. Even though, if you would stop and think for a moment, is it worth it to do this? But we know what the repercussions are. Nobody would really seriously do it. So it's so as you said, is that what a person knows does not really affect the way they behave. Which is a very frightening idea. And Rabbi Tzula says that Rabbi Yisrael was mechadesh, that a person could be mamin b'hakadosh baruch hu, a hundred percent, a person could be mamin b'schar v'oynesh, and it's irrelevant in terms of how a person behaves. Why? Rabbi Itzla says, Rabbi Yisrael said, it's a gzeras hakosov. In order to allow for Bechira, Gazar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that what you know does not affect you at all. Pacha Noira. Uh, you know, we live in a generation, Emuna, Emuna? It's not, it's come out not relevant, Emuna. Everyone has Emuna. It's not about Emuna. Who doesn't believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Who doesn't have a hundred... Rabbi Yisrael's chiddush is that even if a yid has a hundred percent emuna, it doesn't make a roishim on the lave. And the same way Hashem was goyzer, that if you believe in Him, it still doesn't affect the way you act. Hashem was also goyzer that if you're oyved, if you work on yourself, it puts the yira shamayim back in your heart. This was the big chiddush of Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. And this is brought out in the Sefer Shari Ar. It's Kedai, if there's anywhere in the world to learn Shariar, it's in, it's in this Makai. So, I was reading up a little bit I, uh, about the history of uh, this very Chosheva Makai. And I was reading about an individual by the name of Mr. Strauss, Shmuel Strauss. He lived in Germany. He was a Talmud not a Talmud. He was an acquaintance of the Altar of Kelm. Rabbi Sol Salant had three primary disciples. Altar of Kelm, Rabbi Sol Petterberg, Rabbi Tali Amsterdam. Rabbi Sol said the Altar of Kelm is a Chacham. That was his specialty. Rabbi Sol Petterberg is a Lamdin. Shal Suchuv is Priyitzchak. And Naftali Amsterdam was a Chassid. Obviously they were all Chachamim. They were all Lamdanim. They were all Chassidim. But these were their The altar of Kelm told a Jew by the name of Shmuel Strauss that in order for Mashiach to come, people need to learn Musr in Yerushalayim. So he needs to set up a Makoim of Musr in Yerushalayim to bring Mashiach. Shmuel Strauss had no money. He started off as a banker. You know, they know the story? A little bit? Basically, uh, this is what I read. I'm not such an expert in this uh, story. He had a coat. He did his banking out of his coat. He had a setlach in one pocket. He had his money in the other pocket. 
And one time he had to go to a bris, so he had to take off his coat and put on his Shabbos coat. So he put the money in, in the, one, the right side of one pocket and, and the setlach on the other side. And then he goes to Shabbos and he realizes he has everything in his pocket. Usually he kept it in his coat. So he didn't know what to do. So what can he do? It's Shabbos. He took all his money, he threw it out on the floor, all the setlach, he threw it out on the floor. And he knew that uh, his financial future w- would be very bleak. And he comes back after Shabbos and all the money is there and all the tzetlach were there and from there on HaKadosh Baruch Hu benched him. He became very wealthy. He bought this property and he set up Chatzar Strauss. Ravitzel Petterberg came here in 1904. He made a base Hamusar. Rav Naftali Amsterdam came here in 1906. He joined Ravitzel Petterberg. I want to share with you something very interesting. Here in this book, it says that the Musr that emanated from this Chatzar was so palpable, it permeated the vicinity that the Arabs called the area Musarara. Musarara. You know that? You stop an Arab, you invite some Arabs into the yeshiva, you ask them, what's the name of the Makoim? Say Musarara, because it's a Makoi Musar. It's entrenched in the stone. It's seeped into the walls. It's a Makoi Musar. So I want to share with you a, a little kasha I had and share with you an idea. In the beginning of Parshas Lachacha, I didn't see anybody who asked this question, but I think it's a very strong question. So the Pasuk says, Vayikach Avram as Sarai Ishtai. Avram took Sarai, Ves Loit Ben Achiv. He took Loit, his nephew. Ves Kol Ruchusham. Who remembers the next words? Ves Kol Ruchusham. Asher Rachashu. That's all you need to know. Ves Kol Ruchusham and all their possessions, Asher Rachashu, that they possessed. Ready for my question? No kidding that they possessed. What else do you do with possessions? As should say, why does the Torah have to say Asher Rachashu that they possess? What else do you do with possessions other than possess them? What else could you do with it? And the possessions that they looked at, the possessions that they they knocked on, of course, you possess possessions. Why does it say Ve'es Kol Ruchusham Asher Rachashu? One more pasuk. Lloyd is kidnapped. So the Pasuk says, Vayikhu es loit, ve'es kol rechushai, ben achi avram, vayelechu. You hear these words? They took loit, and his possessions, the son of the brother Avram, and they left. This question I found that Rizal asks. That Rizal asks, the possessions were not the nephew of Avram. It says, Vayikhu es loit, why does the Torah, why is the Torah mafsik? The Rechush was not Ben Achi Avram, Lloyd was Ben Achi Avram. That reason I was so troubled by this question, that reason I says the Torah is being Megale. Uh, Sisrei HaToyra, that Rava, the Mechaber of Talmud Bavli, his Neshama was in Loit, and therefore it says, Vayikhoes Loit, Ve'es Rechushoi Ben Achi, Rechushoi Ben Achi is Rosh Teves Rava, and if we would have said it correctly, you wouldn't have the Remes. So the Torah wrote it backward, to be Meramez to the Neshama of Rava. Well, what's Pashib Shad in the Pasuk? So let me tell you a little story. The story happened right over here. So Rav Itzel Petterberg lived over here. Rav Naftali Amsterdam lived over here. And being Bali Moser, you know Rav Naftali Amsterdam learned Moser two hours every single day. Not a day would go by that he learned, didn't learn two hours of Moser. And they would go out into the forest in the area of Shemana Tzadik and they would reprimand themselves and talk to themselves and say, you're already an old man and the Yom Amisa is coming and what, what have you made of yourself? How are you going to give a din v'cheshbon? 
And Rav Itzala would do this, and Rav Tali would do this. And one time, they, were, they would be reprimanding themselves so loudly, Rav Itzala said, whose voice do I hear reprimanding themselves? It sounds like what I'm saying. And they, they sort of overhear each other reprimanding themselves. And they, they bumped into each other. And, and they confide in each other how they feel like so much of life has passed by and they haven't accomplished yet. And they said, it's, it's terrible, Rabbi Sol Salanta, our Rebbe's not alive anymore, what are we supposed to do? So they said, you know, we only have one Eitzah. Okay, we're talking about two of the G'day Hadar. The only Eitzah is we need a Rebbe. So now we live in a generation where somebody knows already how to read Chumash with, with Rashi, with the English translation, they have, I'm already Rash Gebahag, I don't need a Rebbe. The G'day Oilam felt that in order to grow and turn your Shamayim, they could be in their 80s, they still need a Rebbe. So they said, we have no alternative, we have to go to the Rav of Yushalayim, Rav Shmuel Salant. Rav Shmuel Salant, B'zivuk Sheni, was the nephew, was the son-in-law of Rav Zundel of Salant. And we're going to go to Rav Shmuel Salant because, and we're going to say, you're the Rav of the city, you need to provide us with a Rebbe. And if you're not going to do it, so you have to show us who could be our Rebbe. So they go to Rav Shmuel Salant and he what he thought this was a humorous question that two Gedoyle Oilam would come to him that they need a Rebbe. And he listens to them, you know, he, he humors them, but he saw how sincere they were and how much they really wanted a Rebbe. So he gave the following psaac. He said, Rav Itzula, you go to Rav Chaim Berlin. Rav Naftali, you go to Rav Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. So they said, okay, Kach Pasak Rav Shmuel Salant. They said, until how long do we need to sit by the feet of our Rabbeim? So, Rosh Hashanah said, until you learn something you didn't know before. And the Gabbai of Rosh Hashanah said, Oy vai, these, these Anovim, they're going to be sitting by these Rabbeim forever and ever. The, it's, it's never... <coughs> So it's so Petrovic knocks on the door of Reb Chaim Berlin. Reb Chaim Berlin stands up. Why is the God of Hadar coming to me? And, and he, Pemali says, you know, I feel my growth in, in your Shamayim and in Torah has, has plateaued. I need a Rebbe to be able to continue to grow. And Reb Chaim Berlin didn't know what to say. He said, uh, I, I can't be your Rebbe, but I can't. Ain't Misarvin Lagado. He didn't know what to say. He said, uh, okay, come tonight. I'm giving a share. We'll learn together. And Rav Itzla Petterberg sat at the feet of Rav Chai in Berlin until one Matzah Shabbos. Rav Itzla Petterberg had yard site. So he sends a message to Rav Chai in Berlin. I can't come to Shir tonight because I have yard site for my father this week. So Rav Chai in Berlin said, Gewaldek. Because I want to tell you something that I learned from Rav Shmuel Salant, who learned from the Chachme Yerushalayim. Minog Yerushalayim is that the Matzah Shabbos, before a yard site, you don't daven for the Amr. Why? It's a lack of Kibbut Avayim. Because why do, does a person, why does an Avayim only say Kaddish for 11 months? Because normally, the Rishon in Gehenna, they're there for 12 months. The person doesn't want to say that their parent was a Rasha, so they only say Kaddish for 11 months. Likewise, the reason to say the Dan for the Amud, Matzah Shabbos, before the yard site is in order to get the father out of Gehenna, but it's not covered to assume the father is in Gehenna. So in Yushalayim, you don't daven for the Amud, the Matzah Shabbos, before the yard site. Rav Itzel said, Really? I didn't know. And he made the mistake. He said, I didn't know that. He said, Great, I thought you didn't know that. Now, I don't have to be your Rebbe anymore. And you don't have to listen to that halacha that I just told you. Go daven for the Amud and, you know, have a good day. You know, the, the, whole, the game is over. But Rav Naftali was still at it. And Rav Naftali was going to Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld. Until one day Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld, who, by the way, was also very involved over here, according to what I read, he was the, became the president of Chatzar Strauss Moistois Hatoira in 1899. Rabbi Yosef Chaim said, Chazal say, Ein ben David ba ad sheyaseich daitem in Hagula. David HaMelech won't come until people forget about Mashiach. So Avtali said, how could that be? The whole, every day we say, Ani mamim ben munu shuleim ha Mashiach. So Rabbi Yosef Chaim said, very pasha. 
If somebody would say, look, look out the window, Mashiach is here. What would you think to yourself? You know, like, yeah, good one, right? Says, so that's exactly the point. So long as we still think, when somebody says Mashiach is here, good one, so we're Mashiach Das from the Gula, Mashiach could still come. And then uh, um, Rabbi Yisrael Zanfeld told Rabbi Naftali, okay, you didn't know that, you know, you don't need me anymore. So the question is, why would two Gedoy Hadar need a Rebbe? Rabbi Yitzchak Petterberg wrote, Shal Shetshuvas Pri Yitzchak. It's one of the Paiske Hadar. As a young man, the Beis Halevi once asked a question and gave an answer and Reb Chaim was there, and Reb Chaim gave another answer, and Reb Itzla was sitting there, and he didn't say a word, and they were one, wondering whether this Reb Itzla knows how to learn, and later they looked in the pre and the Beis Halevi's Kasha was there, and the Beis Halevi's Teretz was there, and Reb Chaim's Teretz was there. This man needs a Rebbe? Reb Tali Amsterdam needs a Rebbe? What do they need a Rebbe for? So here's the deal. There's a very big mistake out there. That it's enough to learn Torah. Learning Torah, so I learn Torah, I do what I have to do, and I'm, I, what more do I need to do? What more could I do? The answer is it's not enough to learn Torah. The Torah has to be coursing through your veins. The Torah has to become part of you. The person's personality has to be infused with Torah, where the person becomes one with the Torah. So how does a person connect to the Torah on that level where they're not just, I understand, we come to yeshiva and we learn morning seder, we learn afternoon seder, but how do you elevate yourself? Where you're not just learning Torah, where the Torah becomes part of you. Part of doing that, one way to do that, a very important key in doing that is Asei Lecharav. Because a human being is not a computer. And Torah is not mathematics. If Torah is mathematics, so you just learn. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 times 6 is 36. But Torah is not just uh, intellectual discipline. Torah is das elikis, And we're basar v'adam. And what makes an influence on basar v'adam? What influences a person? Another person. Another human being. And the Torah has to be transferred to you through the vehicle of another person, another Rebbe. And Rabbeinu Yoyna writes that every person in their life, the way Asei L'charav works is you don't have to find the biggest guy and the biggest tzaddik in the world, even someone who you think is less than you. But in your mind, you psychologically say, okay, this person is my Rebbe, so when I learn from this person, it makes a different level Roshem on me. It's not just something I know, it enters my Nisham, it enters my mind, it enters my, my lev. So if it's a Petterberg in his 80s, when he's ready to God recognize for him to continue to have Aliyah and Ruchnias, he has to connect with another Tamar Chacham. Some people daven, and some people are so connected to davening that they become one with the tefillah. Like David Amalek said, not va'ani mispalel, va'ani tefillah. Some people appreciate shalom. David Amalek so valued shalom, he says, ani shalom. And some people are into their things, and they're so into their things that it's not just they own a car, or they have a suit, or they have a zach. They're the guy with that zach. That thing defines who they are. You know, yeah, some people, they have a nice car, and some people, they're the guy with that car. It's like their whole mitzias is, is defined by their car, by their house, by their whatever they have. Says so, Rav Shimon Schwab, you know, in the beginning of uh, Parsha's Lech Lecha, Hashem speaks to Avram. And by the middle of the Parsha, only after Loit leaves Avram, Vayoyimer Hashem al-Avram, Acharei Hipared Loit Me'imai. 
Says Rashi, why would Hashem only speak to Avram after Lot left? Says Rashi, so long as Lot was with Avram, Hashem would not talk to Avram. So Rav Shwab asked, so then why did Hashem speak to Avram in the beginning of the parasha? Yom Hashem al-Avram lech lecha. So obviously Lloyd in the beginning of the parsha, he's a good guy, and by the middle of the parsha he went sour. What caused Lloyd to go sour? He saw Sadaim. He wanted Sadaim. He wanted Gashmias. He wanted this world so badly. You know who Lloyd became? Vayikhu es Lloyd. Ve'es rechushai ben achi Avram. Lloyd's name was, he became the guy with that car. He wasn't Lloyd ben achi Avram ve'es rechushai. He is now defined as, Vayikhu es Lloyd ve'es rechushai. His essence was his rechush. He became one with his money, with his possessions. His gashmias was him. And then, the way we identify him is V'es Ruchusha, and then, by the way, he's also Ben Achi Avram. But we could say in the beginning of the parsha, Lot was still a good guy. So in the beginning of the parsha, the Torah says, V'yilech Avram, V'yikachimai es Lot ben Achir, ben Achir, V'es kol Ruchusha, says the Torah, Akdoisha, you know what Avraham and Lot's attitude was toward their, their Ruchush? Asher rachashu. Their rachush, their, their possessions were just what they happen to own. That's the attitude you should have to Gashmias. What I have is just what I happen to have. That's all rachush is. We asked, that's called rachush, asher rachash. What else do you do with rachush? What else you could do with it is what happened to light. What happened to light was, you know what he did with his rachush? It became who he was. What happened to Lot Lera is the converse of the Bali Musar who lived in this Chatzah. They were not Loim De Taira. It's not enough to learn Taira. You could go so far as to say a person could learn Taira, and it could be, it doesn't make a Roisham on a person. Because it's not enough just to be Loimade. Person has to become one with the Torah. People who have a Rebbe, people who connect with Tamid Chachamim, their connection with the Torah is on a much deeper level. You know, Chazal give us many techniques of how to be Matzliach and Torah. Chazal say, Ashrei Shabalakan v'Talmudoi biyadai. The Marsha says, if you write, if you write. Marsha says it makes a deeper roishem on a person. Chazal say, and bepiv. When you say the words of Torah, it makes a deeper roishem on a person. Marsha explains. This is what he says. Marsha says when you say Torah, if you just learn, you're learning with your mouth. If you, if you, you're with your mind. If you say the words, Marsha says your whole body vibrates. The Marsha says. So not only is your your mind learning, your neshama learning, your feet are learning, your whole body is learning. It's kol atzmoisai. Because it's not enough to learn. You have to figure out how are you going to get the Gemara, belibai, b'moichai, into your personality. That was the, the great teaching of the Bali Amosar, Ravitzla Petterberg, Rabbi Aftali Amsterdam, Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. Rabbi Yisrael would say, the greatest distance in the whole world is the distance between the mind and the heart. Because everybody knows what to do. But it's a matter of feeling it. Esau's head is also buried in the Maras HaMach Because Esau knew just as much as everybody else. But it was Bepiv. The Avoida of Limar HaToyrah, Avoida HaMusar and your Shamayim is to get it from your mind into your heart. So you have uh, a head start over here. You're learning Torah in the Makayim where the very stones are infused with this idea. Even the Oiv Dei Kachav Mazolais, they call this Makayim Musarara. This is the Makayim of Musar. This is the Makayim, Makayim Messiah. You should have Siyata Deshmaya in this place that uh, your Limanat Torah should 
be able to transform you and elevate you. And Bezus Hashem, you should be Matsliach, Yimali Hashem, Kal Meshalais, Libchem Lataiva. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.